NBA 2K18 tutorial number 15. We'll be talking about defense today, my favorite part of the game. This is part 3 of my defensive setting series for 2K18 this year and we'll be looking at a detailed study of off-boss settings today and exactly what they do, what they look like, when you should use them and what's the advantages of them. Right, and the two main ones we're gonna be focusing are both leave and deny, and I'll be showing you a series of footage as you can see there on exactly just what they do in game to help you out. By knowing exactly what they do in game, it will give you a better idea of what to expect from your defense, and with that, you are definitely gonna feel like a higher level of bond and develop a better understanding, overall understanding of your defense so you can actually have defensive chemistry with your AI defenders to create success and dominate online, offline, and against your friends. So we're going to go right into it and focus on the deny and leave settings and how to use them. And I'm going to show you that they're actually pretty good. They're both very great in their own ways. And if you haven't seen the two previous defensive settings tutorial, just go to uh, my channel and look for the defensive settings playlist and also go to my all tutorial playlist, you'll find the previous ones. Make sure you watch those before you get into this. And the first off-ball setting we're going to look at is the uh, off-ball pressure leave him. We're going to put this on uh, perimeter players and I'm going to show you exactly what happens during the course of a game if you set off-ball pressure to leave him in a wing player. So either the point guard, shooting guard or the small forward. Now by 2K's definition, if you can see on there, leave him stand so our defenders will give a significant amount of space and be the primary help defender when guarding off ball. That says a lot, but at the same time, that says very little because you don't know what's going to happen in multiple situations, right? So we're going to put this on Roberson, so leave him because he's not a very good shooter. And I'm going to show you exactly what happens when you put this on somebody. That's a wing guy, a perimeter guy, okay? So you can see right here, Kyrie is the one that's supposed to be guarding Roberson and he has completely abandoned his matchup. Roberson is all the way in the left corner over there. And if you put this on leave him, what's going to happen is uh, Kyrie, his defender, is going to leave him very early and he's going to guard the paint tons and he's going to guard the paint heavily. Because Westbrook looks like he's about to get a drive here, so Kyrie just going to stay in the paint and deny it. He will retreat back to Roberson, but at the same time, he will be away from him most of the time. So you can see it again here, Kyrie is uh, all the way in the paint again. Roberson once again is sitting in the left corner where he is no threat. So you can see the early help comes again every time when there's a possible drive by Westbrook. So it's, if it just even looks like Westbrook is about to drive, the defender will come in. But this is a, a back and forth relationship. You can see Kyrie has gone back to Roberson and he's going to come back in again when Westbrook poses up. So there's a lot of paint help throughout the course of the game if you leave, leave him on a wing guy. That guy guarding him is going to be coming back and forth. And also what happens is uh, you can see Kyrie here, he's already in the paint again and he's sitting right on the nail. He's deterring all the paint cuts. But the interesting thing about the leave him setting is that you can see Kyrie never doubles. He will go in the paint like that but he never doubles. He will never commit to doubling. So that's an essential part of the leave him setting you have to understand. There will be no double that is triggered. So in this possession, Westbrook is about to ISO on the left and you can see Kyrie has already leave Roberson on the corner and he's already in the paint. And uh, if you focus on Al Horford here, I actually make a mistake of guarding Adams and he gets a clean cut. But because Kyrie was in the paint, it saves me. So what? Westbrook is going there for the ISO. Adam gets a clean cut because I got picked off my Morris who played bad defense. But with Kyrie sitting right there, as you can see, on the leave him setting, it takes away the easy pass to Adams and it forces a skip pass to Roberson who we would be able to recover on easily. So because of that, it saved us from the bad Morris defense and it forces Westbrook to a bad isolation shot. That's great leave him settings. And here you can see uh, the leave him setting demonstrated by Smart, who's already in the paint, coming all the way over to help on Westbrook's drive, leaving Roberson on the weak side corner again to do a tough skip pass by Westbrook. Westbrook decides not to do that because Roberson can't really shoot. So Smart just continues to sit in the paint, but it's almost free in the key, so Smart is going to leave. They will leave to avoid free in the key, but come right back. You see Smart come right back, and he's very aggressive with the defensive rebounding. So they will leave the paint in, to avoid the free in the key, but they will also come right back. And that's why the paint protection is so heavy by the guy that is on the leave him setting. His defender is just going to be aggressively protecting the paint 24-7. 
And another beautiful thing about the leave him setting is you can see Kyrie here once again left the sky, he's protecting the paint. But at the same time, they are actually aware enough to stop the back cut. You see the guy cuts in, Roberson cuts in from the back and Kyrie already in the paint notices that and cuts him back off on the back cut. So that's beautiful because the weakness of that is that you would think Kyrie would fall asleep in the paint and forget the back cut, but they don't. So Kyrie stops the back cut, as you saw there, forces Adams into a tough isolation, win by us. And the leave him setting also applies great to any pick and roll. You can see as the offense runs a pick and roll, Roberson is in the corner, and as the pick and roll develops, the leave him defender will crash right into the paints to stop the roll or the drive, and because Roberson can't shoot, we'll recover in time. Great leave him defense by Smart there. And you can see another pick and roll develop here between Westbrook and Adams and you can see Irving is the leave him defender and he has already got in the paint to stop the roll and the drive and he cuts off the roll here which allows my Horford to recover. We stop the roll completely, forces a tough shot, lock up defense family. And the leave him defender will also be very aggressive stopping post up. You can see Melo in the strong side poster, he's being fronted so there's an easy lob pass but Smart comes all the way over on the leave him setting to deny that easy entry so they will help on any potential entry pass to the post. We rotate back over, contest the shot, <clears throat> great defense on the leave him setting. So here's another post up, strong side post up uh, by Melo here. You can see he's coming across from the left right now. He's gonna get to the right block. And Smart is faking the deny on Roberson, which demonstrates his incredibly high defensive IQ. He fakes the deny, goes right back to the post to deny the entry, forces a tough entry pass. I commit myself on the double here, but you can see Melo is smart. He rotates the ball, but now the switch is kicking in. Now, I actually have no switch rules on here, but because if you have the leave setting on, the computer would switch. So you can see the switch rules I have in this instance is actually just switch guards. But in this instance, because I have double and triggered the leave, we actually got three switches here where smart switches onto uh, Christian. Hayward gets up Anthony, Morris slides over to get Patterson, and Horford, who was or originally on Patterson, rotates over to contest Roberson's shot. That is beautiful leave him setting combined with switch so even if you don't have switch rules to switch all they would still do it with the leave him if you double hard now let's see what happens if we put leave on the opposing center so here we have it on uh, steven adams and with that is uh, the behavior is actually slightly different than when you put it on a perimeter guy this is because the enemy center is usually very close to the basket so the help is a less aggressive by the leave him defender, which is in case this case Aaron Baines. You can see Aaron Baines is actually denying Adams here, but he would back off. So the defender who was on leave him setting on the opposing center will go back and forth, as you can see Bane demonstrated to you here. But when the drive does come and when they do get into the paint, the rotation will come early from the leave him guy who is guarding the center. You can see Baines challenge the shot here, misses the rebound, but I get in good position. Great footwork, block it again, no foul. So that's what the leave him setting looks like if you put it on the opposing center. You can see it this time again, Westbrook is in the post, Baines is on leave him on Adams and he takes about a step or two steps off because, this, because Adams is close to the paint. Right? So it's more about show and recovery when you put the leave him setting on the center. Unlike the wing player you saw on Roberson earlier where Kyrie and Smart would just completely abandon him and guard the paint and rotate everywhere because he's outside. So now let's take a look at what happens if we put the uh, deny off ball pressure settings on perimeter players and in this case we have put it on Paul George. So you can see in these clips that uh, Hayward is the one guarding George so he will be doing the deny setting. And now Adams and Patterson is about to run an off ball screen here and an off ball screen action anywhere on the court will trigger the deny so you can see Hayward has immediately gotten into deny on Paul George. So as that develops, nothing happens. Now there's a pick and roll coming and if there's a pick and roll in development, you see Hayward go deny Paul George again, which locks that up. The Thunder gets into the paint, Hayward won't help. So they rotate the ball, the D9 guy will never help. So they rotate the ball back past Patterson. There's a strong side D9 now by Hayward. So we were able to deny Paul George three times on three different situations in three different occasions there. He gets a jumper, but he misses it. Good defense by us. So in this case, as Westbrook brings up the ball, Paul George is on the strong side, he's about one pass away. So uh, Hayward will go into D9 immediately there and deter the pass from going into George. And as Westbrook gets deeper into the paint, he gets the ball to Adams and once again Paul George is one pass away with no defender in between. So now there's another deny by Hayward on to George. And now they get it to Patterson. 
They rotate the ball. Now when the pick and roll comes, you see, as the pick and roll develops, Hayward immediately kicks in and denies. Because if any kind of pick and roll happens anywhere on the court, the D9 defender will immediately deny his guy. So as that develops, you see, Abrinsk actually gets to the paint freely here, but there will be never help from the D9 guy. So Hayward wouldn't go in there. He would literally sit around Paul George, and you can see the way Hayward has positioned himself, he's playing for the pass. That's what D9 does. You will never get help from that guy, but he will play a uh, steal position in case the driver kicks it out. Uh, we bought Baines over to challenge the Abreen shot. Great defense, lock up. Great deny by Hayward, helping the team out by not letting Paul George touch the damn ball. <laughs> so, another thing about deny that's great, you can see uh, Palancic is, is about to off-ball screen at Paul George here on the left side, and you can see because Hayward is in deny when an off-ball screen happens, it keeps him very tight to Paul George. And because he's tight to Paul George, he was able to avoid the pad of his screen, which shuts that action down completely. We make Paul George bobble the ball, we go into ISO situation here, they take a bad shot, that's great D9 defense by Hayward to deny and lock up that off-ball screen action. And you can see here that Hayward is on the right with Paul George, and this is constant physical like punishment by Hayward. Keep touching Paul George, but he never ventures too far from him, maybe one step away maximum, and he never helps in any pose up or any paint drive. So that's completely different from the leave him setting, but this also has its merits because you don't want Paul George touching the ball, and we succeeded there again. Lock up. So you can see uh, in this clip, everything that I talked about today, the leave him and the deny, all working together to your favor. So it's important for you to understand all these things because when you understand how they work, you will bond with your defense better and that will help you develop chemistry and I believe that will help you lock the other team up because you just know what's going on in the background so you can have anticipation and just enough muscle memory to realize what's going on. So you can see here, everything working all together. Robertson is on leave him, so I've decided to double the ball with Kyrie, with Westbrook in the block. Hayward and Morris are both denying Melo and Horford is on leave him on uh, Adams. But he's close to the paint because Adam is close to the basket. So we're now forcing them to take a shot that we want them to take, which is the open Robinson open free. Whatever. He hits it. That's fine. That's what we wanted to do. And we got the result we wanted. He's not beating us with that shot throughout the course of the game. So let me know if this helped you guys out and if you have a better understanding of the off-ball settings now. Also, let me know what else you wanted to see from the defensive settings. Because I did the general video, so now I can go into detail on all the settings one by one with as much detail as you saw here. And another thing I want to mention is that uh, you'll be like, oh Sam, then Robertson can't shoot at all, so of course you put it to leave him. But what if it's like a good shooter? Good shooter obviously don't. But if it's a mediocre shooter or a guy that just shoots, like someone like Damari Caro or like Kent Basemore, like those on defense kind of good shooters and at the same time not a very good shooter. If you have a long defender on them, I suggest you try some leave him to see if the uh, player you're playing against will rotate the ball and you know do smart defense that way. Because if they don't and you have a long defender and you have good closeout speed and you trust you know your read and react and your own defensive ability to close out on time, you should still put leave him on perimeter guys. Just one guy though, right? Not not two. Just one and you don't know, see what you can get. Don't just limit yourself on that setting on guys who can't shoot at all. If it's a mediocre guy, still try it just to see if they will take advantage of you properly. If they don't, the advantage goes to you because you saw how strong the help defense was when you run the leave them settings. All right. And uh, one thing I want to mention, as of September 30th, I've been talking to 2K and setting them all the time, but they still haven't fixed it. The matchup glitch is still there. So <sighs> very frustrating for online, offline and against friends. But as always, thanks for coming by. Let me know how you feel about these. Uh, there will be a new freelance tutorial coming tomorrow on Swing. So I'm gonna... I think I've done what I wanted to start on spread offenses. So I'm gonna focus more on post-up, uh, pick and fades, and uh, free two spacing, and uh, high-low actions. They're all so awesome. High-low RC cuts. Mm, family. It's gonna be very exciting. We'll be showing you guys some unstoppable post moves. And uh, we'll begin with swing freelance, though, so you guys can get into the correct spacing for a more, you know, bully ball free to offense. All right, as always, thanks for coming. I'll see all of you next time.